All right. Good evening. We're live on Facebook. Hi, everyone. And welcome back. Welcome customer. back. Greg, Rich, how you guys doing? Here. Excellent. Excellent. We have an amazing show. Yeah, thank you. Let, let everybody come, 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 uh, come join. And uh, the folks that uh, continuously watch us, thank you for joining us yet again. We have yes. a great show today. Um, obviously, there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of, um, you know, a, an air of victoriousness, right? And uh, a kind of a, a, a coming to peace, I want to say, as I mentioned that on Saturday, obviously, everybody knows what we're going to talk. And we have an amazing as joining us, uh, an, an important guest for this particular uh, topic. Uh, David, please go ahead and introduce who we have joining us today. Yes, thank you so much, everyone, for, for joining us tonight. We are very, very fortunate to be joined with Elizabeth Children. Uh, she is Director of Communications Director for the Armenian National Committee of America, ANCA, in Washington, D.C. Elizabeth, thank you so much for staying up tonight uh, to join us. Uh, it, it seems like you might still even be in the office. Thank you so much for, for joining us this late and being um, so flexible with your schedule and your time. We can only imagine how busy it's been for you leading up to this moment and even beyond. Uh, so thank you so much and welcome to Arach Media tonight. Well, David and uh, Greg and Rich, thank you so, so much for having me this evening. It is, we are going, living through some historic times here in terms of U.S. Uh, policy. And you're right, I am here at the ANCA offices. You know, the running joke is that if anything uh, around uh, before midnight is a half day here at the ANCA. And so uh, really appreciate a wonderful way to finish off the day here, speaking to you about this very important topic. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we had a historic uh, weekend, right? Uh, president Biden yeah. recognized the Armenian genocide, the first sitting U.S. president to do so. Uh, to get us started tonight, we, we just we'd like we're going to speak with you about a number of topics surrounding that and beyond. Rich, why don't you kick us off tonight uh, with the conversation uh, with okay. Elizabeth? Yeah, sure thing. Well, Elizabeth, uh, also I wanted to th thank you for being on board uh, and and being here tonight. It means a lot that you you know be up all night. Uh, you know. It, in Washington, D.C., just to speak with us. So before we get into any questions and talk about, uh, you know, sort of, you know, the week and, and some of the topics, um, can you maybe help uh, explain to some of our viewers who don't know you or the ANCA a little bit about what the ANCA does and specifically your role in how you help the cause? So the Armenian National Committee of America is the grassroots Armenian American public affairs organization. We uh, have about 50 chapters across the United States. Uh, and our goal is to uh, ensure the safety and security of the Armenian homeland and secure justice for uh, the Armenian people with regards to the Armenian genocide, with regards to supporting Artsakh. And so we have a network of advocates across the, uh, across the country who we work with to to, uh, work with Congress, with the administration, uh, with our state and local communities to advance our community's priorities. And that could be ev that's everything from uh, um, stand strengthening U.S.-Armenia ties. It's uh, standing with Artsakh uh, and ensuring that aid and the security of Artsakh is part of that. It is standing up with regards to the Armenian genocide and securing justice for the Armenian genocide. And here, the recognition effort is a very important part of that. It's it's advocating for our uh, communities in uh, the Middle East and in other countries where they're beleaguered, where they're under distress, and we can uh, work with the U.S. government in order to uh, assist them. Um, and uh, as part of this, my role, uh, I am the communications director, and so we, I, uh, I work on kind of two different areas. One is internal communications with our community to make sure that our community members across the country uh, know exactly what's going on here in Washington, D.C., uh, what's going going on with our network of chapters so that they can better uh, be part of the process to lend their voice to the uh, American political process to help advance uh, our community's priorities. Uh, I work uh, with our uh, team of uh, advocates here in the DC office and in our regional and local offices to give them the tools necessary to be able to contact members of Congress, like our March of Justice platform or our Connect, uh, Connect platform, call to Quick Connect platform, et cetera. Um, and uh, the second component of that, of course, is working with the US media, with the international media to share our community's priorities with them and look to see that our uh, issues are fairly represented in those areas. 
Um, I've been uh, blessed to have this opportunity for the past 25 years. Of course, I hail from San Francisco originally, got my start in the San Francisco uh, Bay Area Armenian National Committee, uh, worked with uh, some of the most incredible advocates there, and I continue to work with them. And it's my absolute, absolute pleasure to be talking to a, uh, our community and to uh, uh, your uh, SF-based, Bay Area-based Arach Media right now to share our priorities. Great. That's yeah, fantastic. Thank yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, it's very, very important role. Uh, <laughs> uh, very clearly, it's so, it's so important, especially for the grassroots activism. Um, and we're really grateful for your efforts and your work and all of the work of ANCA and your your team and members of the staff there. Uh, it's phenomenal, phenomenal work. And it's and it is culminated in this moment, right, with Biden recognizing, uh, of course, we have so much more work to do and we're going to touch on some of those things at some point tonight and beyond but share with everybody the significance what is what the significance is of biden's historic recognition just using that word and reframing it in the way he did uh what is the significance of this uh, recognition well president biden by uh, clearly uh, recognizing the Armenian genocide ended basically the longest running foreign gag rule in American history. I mean, for decades, basically, the United States had outsourced our policy on the Armenian genocide to an unrepentant perpetrator of genocide, Turkey. They were setting our policy for us. Uh, it was undermining U.S. Uh, credibility when it came to human rights internationally. Uh, you know, it's difficult to call on countries not to commit genocide or to help prevent genocide when you pick and choose the genocides you're going to be speaking clearly and unequivocally about. And so this is very, uh, this recognition was very important in terms of America's credibility when speaking about genocide overall. Uh, it's very important with regards to, again, uh, who sets American policy on these issues. We had outsourced this. It, a foreign government was uh, basically telling us where American policy was going to be on this issue. And President Biden, uh, with this statement, said, took it back, said, America is going to decide its own policy on this, uh, on this course, enough of the foreign intervention here. Um, and in addition to that, it's very, it's a very forward thinking decision that was made in terms of recognition, because at the end of the day, uh, it's the first step towards working towards getting justice for the Armenian genocide internationally, the justice that Armenians are owed. Uh, and it's also an important step towards ensuring the safety and security of Armenia and Artsakh and the long-term viability. Because, and we really saw an example of this in the past six months when we had uh, Turkey and Azerbaijan basically trying to finish off what they started back in 1915 through the genocidal attacks. You know, this, by remaining silent now, it's based, it was not just remaining silent about what happened in 1915 to 1923 and mischaracterizing it. It was basically a, a, a kind of acquiescence to the ongoing genocide that we were seeing uh, through the attacks in September and beyond. So this was a very, very important watershed moment in terms of US uh, foreign policy and in terms of policy regarding the genocide, the Armenian genocide, and now the, um, time is, the goal is to use this new policy, this U.S. policy, to see how we this can translate into a um, reformed policy with regards to U.S. Armenia relations, uh, a reformed policy with regards to Artsakh that ensures its safety and security, and then also longer term to see how we can utilize this in terms of securing justice for the crime of genocide. Yeah. Well said. Thank you. Um, yeah, Rich. Oh, okay. So, so here's here's a question for you. A lot is being said uh, these days about um, about Turkey's position and how their influence is waning, and how there is uh, this thrust by them to to do more in in the region and to regain some some more influence. Uh, but the bigger question is, what does this mean for the U.S. Turkey relations now that this is the case? Well, now, that, know, US, now that he's recognized. Well, U.S.-Turkey relations has been at a low point for quite a bit, let's be honest here. Uh, we've seen that through the uh, Turkey's purchase of the S-400s from Russia. We've seen through their um, uh, 
um, efforts within the Eastern Mediterranean, their, uh, their issues with Greece, with Cyprus, their uh, meddling in Libya, uh, and of course their attacks on Armenia and Artsakh. And so uh, all of these have put a significant strain on US, uh, on US-Turkey relations, certainly. Uh, this is something that uh, our community has been stressing that uh, Turkey is not a good US ally, that uh, aiding and abetting Turkey in its denial only uh, makes emboldens them in the type of uh, aggression that they're doing, not only against their own people within Turkey itself, but in the region, uh, including Armenia and Artsakh. And so uh, part of the advocacy that our communities have been doing for generations to get to this point have basically uh, opened a uh, have pushed back Turkish kind of repress, uh, uh, repression, Turkish lobbying to the point where uh, President Biden, to the point where Congress in 2019 through the House and the Senate were finally able to, you know, set aside some of the foreign repression and look at the honest truth here dealing with this issue. And right. when you, turns out when you do that, when you give members of Congress and when you, when the White House does take an honest look at this issue, they come to the obviously same conclusion that we've come to all this time, but we have to speak to truthfully about this issue. Well, I'm really glad because I think it's a, it's a good thing that we're far from the days of Dennis Hastert holding this hostage too. So right. it's a good, good thing. Greg, did you, uh, you had, you had yeah, something? Uh, the, this is this is this is this is great. I mean, great in info. My question is actually, slight, you know, a little bit uh, kind of piggybacks off of what you know uh, President Biden uh, stated and how mm -hmm. some of his foreign corps is now responding. In particular, what I want to ask and uh, maybe the ANCA's uh, comment is on the current U.S. ambassador in uh, in Armenia is making a little bit of waves. Uh, why, by taking it upon herself to become somewhat of a, you know, genocide scholar, if we may be, uh, <laughs> if I'm, if I may paint it that way, and I believe the quote is uh, stating that she kept on refraining from using the genocide word, which is a very important and uh, uh, a pointed uh, 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 term that we need to, uh, you know, uh, use whenever we're talking about the incident of 1915, 1923. Uh, but my question is, what can we do? What is your opinion on what, what her choice of words was and how she went in by saying, you know, the Convention on Genocide uh, was in 1951, the genocide in, with a, a being in 1915 and on does not cover that time frame. Um, retroactive, we, right? Yeah, 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 it's a retroactive. Should we uh, also kind of lump in that 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 also excludes the Holocaust in that yes. in that case? You know, uh, you know, let's let, let, you know, let's give it all we got. What is your your thoughts on that, and what can we do to essentially make sure that we stand with President Biden, ultimately her boss, in understanding what you know what needs to be said correctly? Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And, you know, for fair disclosure, the ANCA has given uh, uh, Ambassador Tracy an F rating uh, far, uh, far before her right. state mo most recent statements with regards to the Armenian genocide. You know, throughout uh, the uh, COVID crisis in Armenia, uh, during the war, the attacks on Armenia and Artsakh, really, uh, Ambassador Tracy has been uh, kind of non-existent. Her, uh, uh, she has been tone deaf to the needs of uh, Armenia. She has been uh, not a strong interlocutor between the United States and Armenia in terms of trying to figure out how best to work together to tackle these very important issues. Um, on the art, on Artsakh aid, even before the Artsakh attacks had taken place, uh, you know, after. Uh, 20 years, over 20 years of the United States uh, being really uh, the only country that has given direct aid to Artsakh, thanks to the incredible advocacy of the Armenian American community. Um, mm -hmm. She uh, looked to even stop the demining assistance that was going to uh, uh, Artsakh at the time. So uh, quite frankly, I mean, she walked into this with a terrible rating from the beginning in terms of the ANC, uh, uh, in terms of what her status has been on uh, US-Armenia relations and her role as ambassador. Her statements, interestingly enough, I mean, this is um, reflective of the fact how ingrained this genocide denial or uh, the uh, kind of a complicity in Turkey's genocide denial has been within the State Department. Even now, when President Biden has changed the policy uh, through his statement, uh, you have 
foreign service officers like the ambassador Tracy who can't couldn't get themselves to say the word through the first answer to a question from uh, uh, Radio Liberty uh, the other day with Harry Tamrazian, and then went into this absurd response uh, with, with regards to uh, whether or not, uh, you know, what the international laws are dealing with reparations, dealing with the Armenian genocide. I'll be blunt and say that I'm not an international law expert. She's certainly not an international law expert. But as you said, um, if you're going to talk about the um, that the genocide convention is not retroactive uh, based in 1951 is not retroactive then of course uh, is the Holocaust even uh, a la uh, should reparations be with regards to Holocaust move forward and secondly I would I would say um, in terms of the importance of President Biden's statements look in the last 10 years there have been at least two court cases in the US federal courts that I know of where the lack of a clear policy by the United States president, by the White House, regarding recognition of the Armenian genocide has hindered getting uh, uh, a positive decision for heirs of uh, Armenian genocide survivors. Right. Uh, one in the case of, I believe, the Deutsche Bank, which sure. is still holding on to millions in, of funds of uh, Armenians who perished uh, during the Armenian genocide. And then of course you have uh, cases of Armenian properties, Armenian owned properties within Turkey to this day, um, including Inserlik Air Base, the land under Inserlik Air Base, which is Armenian owned. So these were cases where uh, Americans were bringing uh, court cases to American courts and America's policy, the White House policy on this issue was utilized as, uh, uh, as uh, we were told that the lack of a clear policy would uh, would put the court in a position where they would be preempting the uh, executive branch from a, a, a decision or position on the case of genocide. Now we have uh, a president who is speaking clearly about this issue. We have the U.S. Senate that passed it unanimously. Mm -hmm. You have the U.S. House that passed it 405 to 11. You have 49 states that have uh, talked about this. There is a clear policy in place. This will open the door uh, for future legal actions. Uh, folks, uh, lawyers who are much smarter than I am, who understand the law much better, uh, and certainly lawyers who uh, are, know it much better than Ambassador Trump. Tracy in this case. Yeah. And so this show, what I what her answers showed me is that there's going to be a lot of work that needs to be done by the Armenian American community, by, by advocacy groups like the ANC to uh, basically change the mindset within uh, the State Department uh, to, to match the mindset and the policy set by the President of the United States. Um, and this is going to be an ongoing effort, and we're going to see it cha our challenges uh, to uh, the President's policies. Maybe we'll see it in uh, newspapers where they continue to misrepresent, and we have to fix those, uh, those types of issues there. We'll see it in uh, local communities where there will be uh, pro-Erdogan or pro-Turkey advocates who are going to try to uh, you know, go around this policy, try to minimize the policy. And this is where the uh, Armenian American community is going to have to continue the fight uh, just as hard as the past to ensure that the president's policy, the right policy, is upheld. Absolutely. Um, uh, 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 very well said. And my question to just kind of follow up on this topic is a, a dear friend of the community, somebody we love and respect, uh, Ambassador Evans, yes. had a completely different story when he chose to kind of also go with the truth, but not with the U.S. policy. So my question is in a juxtaposition to that. Um, is there is there a, a way that we can uh, you know, push for a recall for, for this ambassador? Because clearly she is starting to uh, you know, step away from the, the policy. And perhaps we don't need to discuss it here, but it was just something that kind of rung, rung big in my, in my, in my mind. It's like, wow, well, this guy clearly did the right thing and he was reprimanded for it. And this person is stepping away from the current policy, which is recognition of the Armenian genocide by, you know, the executive office. Um, uh, yet she has the right to say whatever, essentially. Yeah, I would I would say that uh, certainly John Evans is a beacon of truth and of uh, good 
policymaking and good diplomacy, uh, who was robbed of his position, quite frankly. Uh, you know, over the weekend, there was an article in uh, Politico uh, by a, a former State Department and National Security Council official, Dan Freed. Um, and uh, as it turns out, Dan Freed uh, actually wrote a number of the previous Armenian genocide uh, related or April 24th statements for presidents, both under the Bush administration and to some extent under the Obama administration. And he was kind of trying to make the argument as to why uh, uh, he they had not utilized the term genocide, appropriately characterizing the term uh, in those statements. And his, I'm going to kind of paraphrase it, but the bottom line was that he was doing it if we didn't know it before, he was doing it for us. He was doing it for Turkey and Armenia so that we can all, you know, uh, come together without the U.S. pressure and whatnot, which is, of course, I'm sorry, a bunch of hogwash. Uh, yeah. And uh, it was, uh, you know, a callous kowtowing to a uh, foreign government, to uh, Turkey. And Dan Freed, as he's trying to explain away why he did this, he was the actual uh, gentleman in the State Department who uh, removed uh, Ambassador Evans from his position. He was the one who cut down, who cut short a, uh, a career by a, a foreign uh, service officer, a diplomat who has served valiantly and truthfully for the American people, uh, not just on, uh, in Armenia, but previously in all his other positions. And so, yes, uh, it would be amazing to see uh, Ambassador Evans returned, someone of his caliber returned. Certainly now, uh, as we know, Ambassador Tracy is uh, was appointed during the um, uh, you know Trump administration. This is an opportunity with a new administration to uh, bring in uh, a different, with a new policy now on the Armenian genocide, to bring in a new uh, ambassador who can better implement that position. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, uh, just to uh, uh, kind of pivot a little bit away from that uh, th that that topic, uh, obviously there's going to be there is already some chatter and a little bit of a backlash from the you know uh, from Ankara Erdogan in particular has been quoted as kind of a Turkey scrambling for new law. In your opinion, what can we expect now that this you know there's a, there's a fallout. Um, there's been, you know, there's been some diplomatic uh, uh, kind of scuffle. You, you know, I call it the typical uh, rhetoric from Ankara. They'll recall the ambassador, then he'll come back, of course. Um, but, but there's, it's true that Turkey is a little bit in a in a in a, in a lobbying effort scramble right now, right? There's there's a lot of, and actually, I'm quoting what the NCA put out today as uh, one of those uh, uh, as as a, as a response to an article. Um, what can we expect from from Ankara moving forward? Because I know they're not going to abandon the United States. They're going to try to rework it somehow. And what are some some things that we may be kind of uh, uh, you know running ahead of the ball? Let's say. Um, well, they are losing representation uh, left and right from PR firms here. And I, I do credit our, the Armenian American community in this effort. Uh, the ANCA has encouraged uh, our community members to frankly reach out to uh, uh, lobby firms that do represent Turkey and Azerbaijan, uh, remind them that they're basically taking blood money, uh, uh, making money off of genocide denial, making money by whitewashing uh, Turkey and Azerbaijan's crimes against Armenia and Artsakh that this is absolutely unacceptable. Uh, so many in the uh, barrier community, during, particularly during the war, uh, did protests with regards to this, reminded the other um, clients of these various PR firms that who's representing them to drop them. And we do see that uh, you know, there's clearly the Turkish government is frustrated that they don't have the level of access that they used to uh, when it comes to uh, the White House, when it comes to the uh, to Congress. And so they're scrambling to bring in new, new blood and we'll be going after them just as we have in the past, right? As a community, uh, letting these new uh, uh, various um, uh, firms know uh, who they're representing and the liabilities of representing a country like uh, Turkey and dictators like uh, Aliyev and um, uh, Erdogan. Uh, that said, you know, there is, you, we see that uh, President Biden is going to be talking to um, Prime Minister Erdogan uh, in a couple of months in June at the, uh, I think that the sidelines of a NATO meeting that's coming up and whatnot. And so there is going to be efforts to repair that relationship. There's going to be renewed 
pressure coming in. We need to be uh, strong uh, throughout this process in our advocacy. Uh, the ANCA has been pushing in addition to trying to help out Armenia and Artsakh through getting foreign aid to Armenia and Artsakh in, as part of the fiscal year 2022 foreign aid bill. We're looking to sanction Turkey and Azerbaijan. And this is an effort that we're working closely with uh, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee Chair, uh, Senator Menendez on this with leaders of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, because the crimes that were committed during the war, uh, the chemical weapons that were used, the U.S. weaponry that was used against Armenia and Artsakh, uh, you know, there are clear uh, violations of international law here in terms of the targeting of innocent civilians, et cetera. And these are areas where we need to ramp up our effort uh, to uh, sanction Turkey and Azerbaijan. And in addition to that, at the very least, to limit US military assistance going to uh, particularly Azerbaijan. I mean, we've seen about a hundred million that's gone to Azerbaijan since 2016. Uh, we often fi times find these weak arguments from the Department of Defense saying, well, you know, the hundred million that we gave to Azerbaijan really wasn't to attack Armenia and Artsakh, it was for, you know, Caspian Sea security, right. whatnot. But of course, we all know that if you give $100 million to any country, that frees up $100 million to do other things, to buy other weaponry, no, to no, attack no, Armenia and Artsakh. So, no, we're sure uh, I mean, it's, it's just Caspian. such a transparent you know, uh, such a transparent, weak argument that they make. And uh, here I, I will t say a Bay Area Congresswoman, uh, Jackie Spear, uh, who is on the Armed Services Committee, just brought that issue up a couple of weeks ago uh, in an Armed Services Committee hearing. And it's and she'll be continuing to pound on this to see if we can uh, re uh, reduce zero out USA to Azerbaijan. Yeah. We are, yeah, we are proud that the Bay Area, the, 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 the representatives from the Bay Area, by and large, California as a whole, but Bay Area, and you know, David, Rich, and I were always scrambling whenever there's one that you know I don't want to say falls out of touch or hasn't been informed yet is what I'd like to say. And we uh, yeah, there's a few. Make sure. Yeah, there's a few. There's, there's a, a few, few we have uh, to go after. Uh, you know, I kind of yeah. want to call them out right now. Uh, Eric Swalwell, um, uh, Jerry yeah, McNerney, yeah. uh, to yeah, name a few. Uh, but a bit, um, no. Uh, Elizabeth, you you outline the all the different fronts where we have to keep fighting, um, and I think it's important for people for people to realize that. Just to continue uh, a little bit more on the discussion about Turkey and their reaction and their response to what's happened. Uh, well, first of all, it was it was a little bit worse than just the uh, just the uh, lobby um, efforts changing or them scrambling for lobbyists now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Erdogan was quoted saying that Armenia is on a historic Muslim land uh, in his recent speech. Apparently, he was just really, really going off. How are how are we dealing with this Turkish communication backlash now that we're seeing? seeing? Uh, perhaps you could speak. Obviously, you could speak on behalf of uh, ANCA's communication efforts. And, uh, you know, how, how are we dealing with that? And what advice would you have for just the grassroots effort uh, to deal with it? Well, David, I would tell you that, uh, quite frankly, the rhetoric coming out of uh, of Turkey um, is nothing new, really, in the sense that, I mean, just in July, right, uh, the uh, Prime Minister Erdogan said that they were looking to finish what their uh, form of their grandparents had started, right? And uh, when we we see similar types of statements constantly from uh, Aliyev in Azerbaijan, I mean, uh, for goodness sake, uh, uh, Aliyev has said that Yerevan is Azerbaijani territory. They've made all sorts of threats on the Zangezur Sunik region of uh, southern Armenia. Uh, so this is a common thread there. This, uh, when uh, all those years that we've talked about and the ANCA has talked about a, uh, you know, the perils of having a unrepentant perpetrator of genocide on your border is that uh, you have these types of, uh, uh, you know, despots of uh, these types of, um, you know, dictators 
who are unfortunately ramping up the rhetoric, making it extremely difficult for countries like Armenia to look for uh, partners in peace quite frankly, in that region. And those are the arguments that we're making to uh, the U.S. government here in terms of uh, reworking the policies, U.S.-Armenia policies, that reflect the danger that Armenia is in, that reflect that, uh, the danger that Artsakh is in, danger that we saw the very real uh, you know, result of in terms of the attacks that we saw and, of course, losing 70% of Artsakh as a result of it. So uh, right now, it's a time to work with our U.S. government, uh, you know, interlocutors, whether it's in Congress, whether it's in the administration, to try to bring in clear policies that are going to, uh, uh, you know, ensure Armenia and Artsakh safety and security. Cut out, cut U.S. military aid certainly to Azerbaijan. Sanction Turkey and Azerbaijan with regards to, um, uh, in terms of the. Uh, genocidal, the uh, crimes that they committed during the war, um, getting the necessary aid to uh, Armenia and Artsakh to try to, re to rebuild post the war that's coming in. And uh, very importantly, and I apologize, I haven't mentioned it yet, but it's certainly number one our, on our agenda, the return of the POWs that we have uh, currently, the over 200 young people uh, who are remain uh, in Azerbaijan, uh, imprisoned in Azerbaijan. Uh, and by the way, very likely more than 200, unfortunately, uh, as there's a number of folks who are missing in action, they're very likely, unfortunately, in Azerbaijani hands. Uh, and here the US can be playing a much better, much bigger role, more important role than it has so far. It seems to be playing more of a wait and see. And I think I, I saw an article uh, in the Washington Post the other day where uh, a, a unnamed State Department official uh, said that they are um, appealing, they're hoping that uh, to appeal to Azerbaijan's goodwill on this issue. And uh, quite frankly, I haven't seen any goodwill coming yeah, from Azerbaijan no on no these issues. Uh, I, uh, last I checked the theme park of uh, yeah. featuring the helmets of uh, Arme dead Armenian soldiers doesn't really inspire the goodwill gene here. So right. uh, they need, the US needs to step up uh, through the Minsk process, be a more active player in that and help try to get these uh, uh, POWs back as soon as possible. Yeah, I totally agree. I think I think if there's one thing I could say about what we have been doing here at Radash Media for the past, well, ever since the war, uh, but certainly afterwards, uh, it, it's been to talk about SUNIC, it's been to talk about the POWs, and it's been to talk about political advocacy. If there are three things that I could say besides the news that we've been doing, it's those three things. Uh, because Absolutely. they're just fundamentally important. So I guess the question I would ask is: Now that Biden is recognized, now that we've, now that we're turning a corner and we're seeing this fundamental shift in the advocacy work that we've done for the past well multiple decades, um, you know, wh what's next? I mean, you know, um, what do you think that we do now that we have this inertia? Like, what what will we be focusing on now? Well, I think that there's certainly short term and long term goals and there's uh, goals that are here in the United States that we can be doing more of and uh, things directly dealing with uh, the policies dealing with Artsakh and Armenia. In the very in the very short term, we have to get more aid to Armenia and Artsakh right now, given the, uh, the a number of displaced Armenians as a result of the Artsakh war. There's uh, legislation being written right now. And here the Bay Area plays a huge uh, role because the chair of the House uh, appropriation subcommittee that deals with foreign aid is from uh, the Oakland area. It's uh, Congresswoman Barbara Lee. She's yeah. writing the bill right now. And so Armenian Americans in the Bay Area are, uh, need to be in touch with her, sharing the importance of uh, putting in the bill. Uh, in the fiscal year 2022 bill, uh, uh, 100 million, 200, the ANC has asked for 250 million. It's more than what the Congressional Armenian Caucus has asked for, but we're doing that because we need some, um, uh, some wiggle room here in terms of being able to negotiate what we right. want to see. 
Uh, we'd like to see a floor, a minimum of 100 million going to Armenia, because this is what the folks need to survive. Uh, at the same time, getting into that bill and getting into the National Defense Authorization Act, uh, which, by the way, goes through the Armed Services Committee, where Congresswoman Speer is a member and is a senior member, uh, putting in restrictions on US aid to uh, military aid to Azerbaijan, extremely important here. And then working through with the White House uh, to see what type of sanctions that can be put on Turkey and Azerbaijan as a result of this. These are very short-term goals uh, recognition uh, of the genocide gives us an opportunity to relook at the broader policy between the United States and Armenia. And that needs to come uh, bring about tangible changes in uh, law uh, in, um, policies to ensure Armenia's safety and Artsakh security, et cetera. Um, those are some of the short term, immediate right. things that folks can take action on. The ANCA uh, has uh, action alerts set up uh, through yeah. our system that uh, takes literally less than two minutes to take action on to uh, write to your uh, legislator. Um, if you go to anca.org, you'll see the alerts that are uh, listed there. Right now, we have anca.org forward slash April. We had three clear asks for the month of April. One we accomplished, which was uh, we had asked folks to encourage the White House uh, to recognize the Armenian genocide. That's done. Check. Uh, we uh, have the se uh, secondary uh, calls to action, which are to uh, ensure that um, 100 million or more goes to Armenia and Artsakh, uh, fiscal year 2022 foreign aid bill. And then, of course, uh, urging members of Congress to support uh, HRS 240, which calls for the immediate return of Armenian POWs. So that's an um, immediate things that can be done to get emergency assistance to Armenia and Artsakh for their security. You know, in terms of US policy, uh, we're looking at, for example, uh, in terms of uh, genocide education, you know, uh, Beria is also home to the Genocide Education Project, a fantastic organization that's been doing excellent work with our uh, uh, school districts across the United States to ensure that the genocide is taught. I believe based on their website, there's about 14 states that currently include the Armenian genocide as a reference, as a example of genocide in their curricula. We need to expand that. We need to uh, use this new recognition, uh, this new policy to work with states to make sure that uh, the genocide is taught even more so. It's incorporated even more so in uh, textbooks. Um, and uh, this is an ongoing process here yeah. as part of that. And then of course, there's legal avenues as well. And, uh, you know, as I, I mentioned earlier, court cases uh, within U.S. federal courts dealing with genocide era assets. Uh, now these are going to, there's going to be opportunity for lawyers, uh, uh, international law experts, groups like the Armenian Legal Center for Justice and Human Rights, and all the lawyers, uh, Armenian Bar Association, etc., who have looked at these cases before, now armed with a U.S. policy of recognition to see where we can take that, both on the in, in the cases of individuals uh, bringing court cases, and then, of course, uh, national level stuff, like, for example, the return of churches, for example, conf confiscated by Turkey uh, and Azerbaijan, uh, and then more broadly, uh, national claims of reparations and uh, in terms of uh, the genocide, uh, the genocide. So these are uh, all kind of uh, some of it is going to be the advocacy work that the Armenian ANCA and the Armenian community going to do are going to do. Some of it is going to be uh, working with the groups like the Genocide Education Project to do uh, ensure that genocide is taught. Uh, some of it is going to be uh, working with lawyers or through lawyers and legal organizations to see where uh, in terms of the legal and reparations uh, owed to the Armenian people. Um, and then, of course, the broader communications work that needs to be done uh, with uh, local newspapers, national newspapers, media outlets, to ensure that the Armenian genocide is now, with this new recognition, uh, uh, consistently uh, and correctly represented. No, I, I think that, that's great. Now, the ANCA has a, has a long storied record of helping and of driving uh, the kinds of changes that we've seen come to fruition this past week. And that's a really big deal. And, and 
speaking as someone who's worked with the ANCA and who has, uh, you know, helped lead efforts here in, in the Sacramento Valley area, um, you know, I, I, would, I would say that I trust that the ANCA is going to come up with some more rapid fire messaging. And you can see it on anca.org. And I'm sure that, that that's going to be rolling out um, as we pivot in this whole new uh, direction for the diaspora and for our lobbying efforts, or our, I should say our advocacy efforts. So, um, you know, with that, I just wanted to say thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for the wealth of information that you bring to the table and for the past 25 years of being in, you know, uh, in the seat and doing everything that you can for the for, for the nation. So, uh, Greg and David, what would you like to, you know? Could not have, could not have said it's so, 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 so uh, educating and so important to have this conversation. Um, you always have us as advocates for any messaging that you need for us to spread to the community. Uh, the Bay Area community and Sacramento community are definitely, you know, strong, and we try to make sure that the, you know, <clears throat> our 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 representatives kind of reflect on that message of, you know, truth to power in terms of right. what the, you know, our ancestral, uh, uh, you know, the the horrible past that we've endured and to kind of go towards um, together with the United States, you know. Yeah. Um, David, to you. Yeah, thank, thank you so much, Elizabeth, for, for staying up and for joining us, for sharing all of your insight and just so such a wealth of knowledge. And you really have ironed out all of the key priorities, both short term and long term, as well as we've gone through uh, and discussed some of the pressing challenges we're facing uh, with foreign relations with Turkey and, and, and what they continue uh, to, to throw at us. So thank you. Uh, we hope that you have a wonderful rest of your evening. Uh, we're grateful and we're going to continue to work closely with uh, the ANC uh, members and advocates here in the Bay Area, uh, as well as in Sacramento and, and, uh, and, and DC, of course, and DC, of course. Uh, uh, yeah, we just we work closely with the people that you've mentioned, like the Genesis Education Project, as well as uh, the ANCSF uh, chapter. And uh, so uh, they're, they're friends uh, and they're extremely uh, well are respected in the community. Yeah. I can't thank you enough, uh, David, Greg, Rich, for giving me this opportunity to speak tonight. And if I can leave with one message, it's please, 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 please to everyone watching, get involved. Sure. You know, make your voice heard within uh, your local, state, federal level. The ANC tries to give you the tools to make it as easy as possible. Uh, figure yes, out what you're really, interested yeah. in, what aspect you're interested in, but please get involved. This is the recognition that we saw uh, this past weekend uh, by, and the new policy change by President Biden. This is a result of decades of work by generations right. of Armenian Americans who wouldn't take no for an answer, who demanded that their own government be speak truthfully about this issue, not just as an honor to the past, but to ensure the safety and viability of the Armenian homeland. And so please get active, visit anca.org, uh, go to marchtojustice.org, our advocacy platform, take action uh, on, on the issues that mean most to you. Uh, and let's together really turn the statement that uh, President Biden made uh, with regards to recognition, put it into actionable items which really impact the lives today of Armenia, uh, of folks in Armenia, folks in Artsakh, and longer term, ensure the viability of our homeland. Thank you so much. Thanks, thanks, well yeah, the, the links are on, will be on this feed as well as on our link tree. Uh, we, keep, uh, we keep them all up to date with uh, all the pressing items. Uh, from uh, the March to Justice action alerts. So. All right. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good evening. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay. So, um, I, you know, that was, that was pretty amazing. I think, um, you know, yeah. was, uh, I, I that hope was... that was what you were looking for. I apologize if uh, if I'm I, I tend to be a little long. No, you oh, totally well, you fine. Totally lost fine. Her. Totally okay. fine. She did great. It was really great. Uh, I thought it was perfect. Uh, like you said, Rich, um, very well thought, very thoughtful, and uh, all important items that we need to be focused on moving forward. And Rich, I want to shout out. I want to give you shout out. We talked about it on April 24 after the the event at Mount Davidson Cross. I think you have characterized it very well that this is just the beginning. We cannot sit back now. Oh, okay, the president finally recognized it. No, like like Elizabeth outlined, 
there are so many pressing issues that need to be dealt with like aid and the pow's uh just to name a few so. no i i, I appreciate that i think i think that 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 you know the inertia that we have that we have all contributed to not just the three of us on this but you know in each of our respective cities and in each of our areas and our regions you know northern california and southern california have done a tremendous job in pushing 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 but so have many other states so have many other anca chapters so many other advocacy groups whether they be uh part of you know the the ones that we we've just talked talked about or or anyone else uh, this entire diaspora has been pushing for this on a generational level and if it wasn't us it was our parents and, and the grandparents before them um so this is a big deal and it doesn't stop today it doesn't stop on sunday we don't or saturday we don't we don't uh get to spike the football Absolutely. so to speak um Absolutely. it just changes it just changes um, that's it that being said that being said we're going to continue there there's there's more uh, uh news to be uh uh, talked about. There are things that we need to uh, continue advocating for, and uh, we now are kind of a little bit in the, in the, in the, in, the, in a scramble for time uh, session. But there was a, such a such an important and good conversation that we have. Uh, we're 15 minutes to the end of the hour. Um, I think we should jump into some of the I items that we made sure that we wanted to kind of. Uh, uh, David, what is uh, what, what should we start with? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think um, you know. Yeah, we, we'll do our best with the time. Uh, we thank everybody for stay, sticking with us and watching. Obviously, it's getting later here, even on the West Coast. Um, you know, look, the I, I think we could, you could argue that the largest, most significant news item over the weekend was President Biden saying the word genocide in his statement and recognizing the Armenian genocide. Um, you know, that happened Saturday morning for us around 9 a.m., um, and I think all of us, when we looked at it, we had to do a double take, right? Because, right. as we can, you know, obviously we're, we're coming off of, uh, you know, commemoration events over the weekend as well, both here in the Bay Area, as well as in Armenia and around the world, uh, commemorating the 106th commemoration or anniversary. I don't like to use the word anniversary because it's obviously it's not a celebration, but the 106th right. year since the start of the Armenian genocide, we were commemorating just over the weekend around the world. And we had this momentous moment, his history making moment of yeah. Biden uh, releasing a statement saying the word genocide. Um, yeah. It was, uh, it was, it was, it was, yeah, it was something to, uh, to, to celebrate, uh, uh, truly. Um, it was something to celebrate as uh, 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 advocates, as all of us, RH Media started, literally, you can say, by our mm -hmm. friendship fusing together through advocacy, mine and yours, exactly. David, uh, then David, mine, yours, with Rich, you exactly. know, and all of us. Um, you know, uh, do I want to see it happen other ways? Sure, maybe we could have done it over baseball or basketball, right, or in another way, but this is the Ar Armenian-American way, and uh, <laughs> I'm pretty much proud of it. I want to say stand corrected on something I said, and it's okay, we don't need to kind of beat a dead horse here right there was a younger group of people and if some of them are watching i'll just kind of reiterate what i meant i was very 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 uh you could say jaded going into saturday okay i was uh pessimistic oh. and on a lot of chats internal chats with friends i've outlined reasons why i think uh this will not be um, they were valid and reasons I, no, and there we was, all had that there was a there was a no no there was a group of people that uh, uh mentioned you know like hey don't you know try not to be negative about it and uh i am very much happy to stand corrected because true true it is true that had he not uh said uh the the, the genocide word this time around we needed to up and just as get you know like with just as much if not more vigor continue the fight um yeah and and, and i'm happy that i was wrong and yeah, i'm happy know. yeah i'm happy that he said what he said and you know i'll 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 take my i'll you know i'll kind of i'll own my uh not not, not necessary pessimism i'll own my uh, jadedness which was as Richard, you, David, has mentioned, over decades of us doing this, uh, David, you and I have been doing it since uh, 2008, at least for me, uh, Richard, for you, longer than that, right? Uh, but every year has been a disappointment. And that's where that came from. Anyways, well, we don't need sure, to there's no, I mean, listen, you know, we, we have a, 
we have a legitimate reason for being cynical about some of this stuff. You know, if you get if, if this roller coaster, roller coasters tend to make people ill. You know, you know they make people vomit sometimes, and this is like the emotional roller coaster that we've been on for our lives. And when the, our host country, the country that we, when I pre pledged allegiance to the flag as a child, I believed that the American government had my best interest in mind. Now we could we could we could outline many different groups of people who are very clear about the idea that the American government doesn't have their back, right? So now we're starting to see this turn. And for the first time in my life, I'm starting to feel like, well, okay, well, maybe there is a possibility that there's hope here. Because before I had this illusion of hope, and then every year I just kept getting disappointed and disappointed and disappointed. And so this year I was like, there is no way that man is gonna do it. There's no way. And as it turns out, I was, I was wrong and I, if there's one thing that i'm glad to be wrong about it's this and yeah. and i don't think it to be frank with you and i don't know how many other people who are watching this right now or listening to it or who are going to i don't know if you got if you all feel the same way i do but i just i don't know that it's really sunk in because this has been the defining modus operandi of being an Armenian, right. which is pushing, 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 pushing. You right. have to push for this because either you ignore it completely and you go, I'm just going to get what I can out of this life and call it good, or I'm going to go hard into the paint and I'm going to push because, God damn it, my, this, this government had better recognize that I have a right to live and that my ancestors went through something horrific, which has set the pace for multiple other uh, you know, people to Trust go go through some, something horrible. So it needs to stop. And so the fact that Biden is choosing to craft the narrative differently, even in saying this word, as policy begins to roll out, we'll see America begin to change to be the beacon that it's supposed to be. And Right. I mean, Rich, I think you just touched on it, right? That's where the focus shifts now. One of many things to focus on is making sure that this rolls out as actual policy, making sure that Ambassador Lynn Tracy knows what she's supposed to say and do and is on the right side of history, right? Among right. other other foreign service agents. But look, I mean, like we all know, we probably were all on group chats going like, wait a minute, I don't see it. Where did he say it? Where did he say it? We're going to be like, hey, no, 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 go back, read it again. He said it because we're so programmed that, yeah, you better read it twice. He does. He says the word twice. He says it in the first sentence, Armenian genocide, Ottoman era Armenian genocide. Look, now we move on. We have a lot to do. And Rich, you showed uh, the image of people commemorating in Armenia at the uh, Zitzan Agaper Genocide Memorial. We commemorated here at Mount Davidson Cross in San Francisco. We were live following the event. Rich, thank you for coming down from Sacramento to, to join us at that event. It was very well attended, more than 300 people, most likely. Um, and now we, we keep going. And right? they were masked, by the way. They did have masks on. Yes, we were wearing masks. I don't seeing very many at all that were not masked. So. Yeah, at our at our event, at our event, right? That's right at, at our at event. Armenia, at Armenia, a little bit less. Uh, there were some, but but less. Here we are. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, you could we could look at a couple of quick pictures there. there. There's the stunning cross, 103 foot cross. Um, there's our local clergy, um, and that was Ella Sahomonian uh, from Cron Four News, local news station in the Bay Area. Uh, she was the MC, uh, and you could see some of the uh, attendees there in the back, uh, the scouts. Uh, so it was a well-attended um, and meaningful event uh, that had a little bit extra weight this year. Uh, the Lieutenant Governor, uh, Eleni, um, I, I'm forgetting how Kunalakis. to say your last name. Yeah, Kunalakis, thank you, Rich, uh, was there, uh, which was the highest level uh, local state uh, official in, in recent years, for sure, that was attending. So Amazing. Yeah. It, was, it was a phenomenal time. I was, I'm so, it was, you know, I don't want to say almost jubilant, you know, had it not been a pandemic, we would have been a little bit different, right? Right. Uh, however, uh, yes, yes, we seems to me that we are kind of, yeah, like I echo what Richard said, like, it's almost unbelievable. This guy right here, this is a young gentleman that is always to the right of me. And uh, that is my grandfather, Mugardish Saakian, born in Rars, never met, ne never met his father because you know the Turks murdered him right um, before he passed away I remember having a conversation it's actually in one of my old iPhones I am going to dig it up and I'm going to pa pa paste it uh, post it on Instagram or Facebook he I do remember him just literally telling me this will never happen mm -hmm. you know what I mean right. he was that much dis dis disheartened by everything that the United States and previous empires have done 
um, that, you know, he went to his grave thinking that that's what's going to happen. And now I'm happy to, uh, you know, yeah. Let him know from, you know, from, from where he is up above that, you know, in fact, yeah. things can be better. And, you know, yeah. he is, you know, his, my great grandfather, you know, yeah. He, yeah. He's, God, he's, God bless, God bless their souls, the sanctified martyrs. Uh, God bless your grandfather, Greg, uh, yours, rich, uh, mine, uh, all survivors, right? Our, our grandparents and we're descendants here because they survived. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, the you know, uh, we'll, we'll share the link to uh, Biden's statement if people didn't see the Already official statement, statement there. Uh, and then, you know, of course, there's been a lot of news that's come out, uh, you know, in one way. It, we saw all the news before, then we saw all the news during and then there were still seeing news after. That's how important the president's words are. Right. Um yeah, and it's not just Armenian authors, I'll have to say, because it's more than that. I think typically, Absolutely. you know, we, we tend to do a touchdown dance every time an Armenian writes an article about Armenian-related issues, and we go, see, see, somebody's talking about it. But when no. a non-Armenian speaks about it, it's even bigger, because because now you start to see this, this inertia. And I'm just going to change the narrative here for, for, for a second. You know, in 1947, when Jackie Robinson... Uh, came up onto the scene in baseball. It fundamentally changed the way a lot of people began to look at race in this country because all of a sudden these kids who were watching baseball started saying, well, how come he's the first black player? Why is it like that? How come there aren't more? And then the discussion about race began to kick in. And those kids became the leaders of the civil rights movement in the 1960s, 20 years later. And right now what's happening is that people are starting to say, well, wait a minute, how come we didn't how come they didn't recognize this before? Why is it? A, why didn't it take 106 years? And so the discussions around why are beginning to evolve, and yes. we've seen it just in the past few days. Let alone what's going to happen in the next few years. Yes. So this is a big deal. This is a this is a uh, this is a tectonic shift yep. in American foreign policy and in America how America deals with itself. Right, because now we're going to have to come clean about. The Native American genocide, and there's going to be a bunch of things that are going to happen, and it is it is about time that America has this reckoning. This is yeah, I hope I it does so lead to, to that. be alive for this moment. Yeah, I hope it does lead to that, Rich. You know, we still have yet to see. Uh, I hope it does. But Biden, like you said, Greg earlier, he kept his word, um, and you know, look, it's not for lack of Turkish or Turkey's own bad actions, um, and it's not for lack of Armenian advocacy. Right. Uh, that's brought us here um, today. Uh, should we touch on the disgraceful New York Times uh, oh, yeah, article, which came out on April 24, after they already talked about how Biden was going to recognize, then they put out this, I guess we're using this term, whitewashed article that essentially belittles the significance of that. It's like, oh, almost makes it like an afterthought. And like we talked about in the the pregame meeting with uh, with Elizabeth was disrespectful in a lot of ways. Um, Carlotta Gall, our favorite Istanbul correspondent for New York Times, uh, she put out a pretty disgraceful piece that really should not be printed by any newspaper, let alone the New York Times. Uh, Rich, Greg. Yeah, uh, it's up there. You know, yeah, it's it, what it is. It's 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 the interesting language breaking with predecessors. Biden declares mass killings of Armenians a genocide. So what it really is, yeah. is just this um, this weird normalization and, and almost like a dismissal. Oh, yeah. Right? It, it gets worse. She calls, she called, she essentially, in my opinion, is justifying Erdogan's aggression as, a, as, a, as the Turkish aggression as his assertiveness. She uses assertiveness. Like, wait a minute. Are you talking about when he's attacking Peaceful yeah, I, I think if, you know? if, if missiles are assertiveness, I don't know, right. it's a little weird, but whatever. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it gets it gets better. We'll share the link. Uh, there might be the paywall on it, uh, but I believe yeah. it is viewable on mobile devices. Uh, that is so, a, yeah, a, we'll share the link. Uh, Greg, any thoughts on this? Uh, I'm actually yeah, working I'll on a letter to the it. editor. I'm working on my first ever letter to the editor about this. Go ahead, Greg. Sorry. Um, they, uh, if you need anybody to co-sign it, Rich and I definitely will. Be Please. Um, Please. So anyways, um, 
I, I think that it's not just the New York Times, but New York Times and uh, Carlotta Gall definitely seems to be taking the cake on this issue, as is, by the way, Ambassador uh, Lynn Tracy, because to be honest with you, for you to keep saying what you're saying after your boss already stopped, the State Department definitely uh, uh, Blinken made sure that that's no longer the case because obviously every, everything has been okay unless it's some kind of a war between Biden and State Department, um, right. which I'm sure there's not. Um, yeah, where are the cables to all their foreign correspondents exactly, exactly. over there that for, uh, say, hey. For, for Carlotta Gall to, uh, look, okay, full speed rewind. I was in Zahkazor in 2010, where a certain uh, Matthew Briaza, this uh, snake of an American diplomat, was essentially explaining to Armenians that you know eventually what you know we are need to we will need to be uh, you know I don't want to say what, but he was clearly there as the representative of the U.S. side in the Minsk group, right? One of the three co-chairs. And he was clearly on the Azeri and Turkish side. Carlotta Gall, and I'll be honest with you, Ambassador uh, Tracy, sound like this fool. Exactly. So what I'm hearing, Greg, is that, that you know, moving forward, the best way to normalize this and to be cool is to just assimilate and become part of the new Turkish empire. Clearly. Clearly. Or, or don't make a mad, don't make a, uh, you know, don't, don't make noise and die peacefully. Um the, the 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 level of I mean, let's just cut right to it right yeah the level of arrogance that i saw from a, a u.s representative that's supposed to kind of represent u.s interest in a foreign peace process was definitely not u.s centric and definitely not uh and then you realize you know start digging deeper and we're not investigative journalists but i'm sure if we can um, we can start digging deeper into Ambassador Tracy and what her ties are, because yeah. I was in a diplomatic school back years ago, and I know what what diplomats typically do. They did their their career diplomats, and they have tie-ins to certain regions. And by the way, anybody that's in the Caucasus is very Turco-centric. They travel usually to Armenia after being some sub 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 secretary of an ambassador in Istanbul in Ankara exactly. I don't know exactly. why that's done but I guess exactly. you know you know the region now exactly. and while they're in Ankara they clearly get warmed up to Turk Turkic blah 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 so that's definitely what I'm reading on uh, uh ambassador Tracy yeah so, Greg you nailed it you nailed yeah. it it's all it's um, all about the career uh they're all they only care about their career advancement in, well uh, i'll i'll, I'll explain Ma yeah. matthew and matthew braza and now we can finish this i know we're going a full tangent uh while i was wondering what he was doing in 2010 in 2013 14 15 we clearly understood exactly what he was doing he was pitching job positions because the u.s senate NCA and Armenian Assembly's efforts, his desire to be the American ambassador in, not Yerevan, Baku. And he's a married to a Turkish woman. Not that that's a bad thing, but it definitely has some kind of a bias there. So here we go. And as far as Carlotta Gall, well, you know, she's operating from the Istanbul desk. So I don't know. Yeah, it, just, <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't scream very objective uh, mm -hmm. from the world's number one paper, uh, yeah. supposedly. Oh, um, anyways, yeah, uh, you know, look. Thankfully, there are publications getting it right. Time put something out that is much better um, framed uh, from an Armenian perspective, if you will. We could share the link, uh, but perhaps we should get straight into more of the news, guys. What do you think? Let's well, run through it. I mean, we're definitely over an hour, and uh, yeah, we, you know, we'll we hold it up. Um, clearly, so obviously everything that we've been engulfed in is uh, the, all the media fallout from this uh, amazing uh, recognition, but there's also things happening in uh, Armenia proper, right? Currently, there's a, there's a political campaign that's underway. Snap elections are uh, destined to happen now in June, I believe June 20th. June 20th. And for that to happen, there was a uh, resignation uh, uh, that w took place. The... Uh, Prime Minister Pashinyan resigns to trigger snap elections. And then each individual party that is going to be running in the uh, in the uh, the elections is starting to now make their kind of statements on who's going to be the prime minister if that coalition or that party uh, wins, obviously, with the, uh, you know, <clears throat> Dava Janagan, uh, my step coalition uh, party, it's going to be you can look up what that word means. Um, he, uh, it's going to be obviously Pashinyan and then, you know, uh, the bright Armenia party, uh, 
recently stated that Gagi Tsarukyan, uh, the uh, oligarch permitted by Pashinyan to stick around, will be because um, yeah. you know, Pashinyan was going to rid Armenia of all the oligarchs. Um, yeah. yeah. But and you then know. you have quite a bit of opposition parties, right? Uh, yeah. uh, Chasnak Suchun apparently is running, as well as uh, Kocharian. Yes. who's saying that he's confident that they're that they're going to succeed in the electoral elections yeah so, absolutely um, um, so that is that's important to note and that is going to be kind of the driving force behind what's happening moving forward initially there was going to be a wholesale boycott of these elections because honestly that initial stance was correct but unfortunately we are in a conundrum uh, as armenians um we have so many things happening, so much danger coming our way. And David, as, as the news succinctly points to what, the horrors that are happening in Sunik right now. Um, but somehow this uh, man that lost the war through his ambitions or through his uh, uh, desires or not, does not matter. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, there was a prime minister that uh, screwed up the you know what I mean? Like the Japanese uh, entire high command, uh, when they lost the war, they left. You know, it doesn't matter if, you know, the U.S. was mighty or not. Somehow this guy just wants to stick around and... I think they did a little bit more than leave. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah they... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they yes. yeah. Um, so... That's a cue, by the way. Right. But anyway. Right, right, right. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for duly noted. Um, uh, uh, for those that... Yeah, anyways. <laughs> the thing that uh, initially was going to be boycotted by every party and thus make this, uh, 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 what do you call it, a uh, null and void election. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, knowing the man in charge now, uh, even if five people were going to vote, only only five, and four of those five voted for him, um, he was going to assume the prime ministership, uh, stating that, you know what, uh, the, there were elections and I won. Um, so now that that's happening, I believe others are jumping in to go like, you know what, we need to kind of uh, start uh, making this very, very short election run, which is, you know, yeah. a month and a half, barely. <laughs> you but know, it, feels like it, could, it feels like it can't come sooner, though, right, Greg? It feels like it can't come absolutely, sooner. Absolutely, absolutely. Rich, Rich, you want to say something? Yeah, you know, my fear with this is that, you know, we're going to get so mired in the, the, there's, it feels like, and I, you know, I, it feels like there's just this deliberate upheaval and that we're going to get mired in these weird processes and what triggers what, what triggers what. And, you know, I think there's a lot of people where, where, uh, you know, who are saying, oh yeah, we need to be unified. Well, yeah, but we also need to have our shit together too. You know what I mean? And I think that, I think that, I don't know, it just feels, it feels like this is, this is heading for some chaos and deliberate chaos too. And I, and that bothers yeah. me, especially it's when there's, when there's there's a lot at stake right now. There's a lot going on. Absolutely, absolutely. The whole Sunni province is under threat. We'll get to that in a moment. But again, people just need to understand this resignation is procedural and he is still an acting prime minister. So this is not him resigning because of what we've been talking about since November 9, right guys? It's not because of that. So we have to just be right. aware of that. So well, you know, and it's not just us that 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 is going through something. Right, right now the Turkish government is going through a little bit of uh, turmoil as well. And so you know, yeah, their economy uh, the, the is still thing... in shambles. COVID's bad there. Well, uh, they're like so... they're they are currently, I think, the third worst after uh, India, Brazil. I think they are even beating the United States in COVID numbers. Yeah, yeah. So, so like, of, and then and then now you have this genocide recognition, like. I don't, we don't know how bad it is on the streets in Turkey after this genocide recognition, but we do know, I saw this, it's not on the list, don't worry, Rich, but the, um, the uh, U.S. Embassy and consulates in Turkey all closed for a couple of days after that genocide oh, recognition. Amazing. So if you're an uh, Armenian there, keep your head down and, oh boy. Um, but you know what? We do have one shining star in yes. the Turkish parliament who is taking some flack, by the way, like serious, serious flack. Uh, he proposed a law in, uh, to recognize uh, the ge genocide, which, as you can imagine, uh, was met with some, uh, shall we say, mild resistance. Um, by mild resistance, what Rich is trying to mention is that he was essentially being uh, told by another parliament member that he he should he should deserve what uh, Talad Pasha would exactly. do. He called him a traitor. Called him a traitor. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and said uh, and exactly. actually said we should do it again. 
Yeah. Let's translate this. Let's translate this. This is an Armenian Turkish member of parliament saying that he wants the recognition of the Armenian genocide. And a Turk is saying that we should do what Talat Pasha is doing. Transla translation. If there's what a Jewish did. member of Bundestag saying that uh, Germany needs to recognize the Holocaust, there's a German out there saying that we should do what Hitler just did. Okay, that's exactly what just happened there. And I know because we are kind of used to this rhetoric from Turkey, but the world outside of Armenian uh, realm needs to understand that that's what is being said. Yeah, you know, so exactly. that, I want to I want to make it clear exactly what he said. Uh, you know, if you're not happy with where you are, then go to hell. Talat Pasha never forced out the patriotic Armenians. He only did so to backstabbers, backstabbers like yourself. When the time comes, you will have a Talat Pasha experience as you may, as you very well should. Now, this and is a government the, official right. and, and, basically and telling him, yo, you, you, okay, first of all, we didn't commit genocide, but you should, you deserve it. And we're going to do the same thing again. So, exactly. you know what I mean? It's, no, they're not even denying it really, Rich. He's not, no one's even denying it anymore. Like Elizabeth said, like uh, Erdogan and other Turkish officials, Aliyev, they're all saying we will finish. We, we will finish what our ancestors started, right? They're not even denying it anymore. No, 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 no. What I, no, they are denying it on an official level. They are denying right. it on a policy level, but on the streets and in their rhetoric and what they say to everybody else, they are absolutely going hard into the paint. True, true, true. Yeah, so you're is. right, but... It's, yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm not I'm not uh, arguing per se. It's, yeah, you, you outlined it well, man. Like, we, you see this bizarre, no, bizarre is the wrong word, like, just completely contradictory uh statements from these people right well Official yeah denial. i mean but you know but you, but you have to understand this is part of their ethos this is part of this is part of the pathology and i you know i hate to broad brush all turks no, um, right but again we you know until the the, <laughs> the 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 turks have an ability to go up against their own government and have real dialogue um it's hard to not put everybody in the same boat and we've had this part of this discussion before but my right. point is is that is that it's part of the pathology of of being a modern turk which is and i should say it has been this way for for decades i mean since i was a kid i grew up with the same sort of rhetoric which was well it didn't happen well if it did happen it wasn't what you think i know you think that it's this thing but it's really a different thing and actually the reason that we killed them all is because they were going to uprise against us and we had to or else and so they're constantly moving the ball they're constantly changing the narrative and the reality is is they murdered our our families and they need to pay for it that's it end of discussion they murdered our families they took our land and they need to pay for it period yeah i don't know why there's a there's this huge crazy like circular discussion around it just it's 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 infuriating Anyway, um, I totally agree. Um, the uh, the next the next item that we want to kind of highlight is the um, what's happening with the with the POW, right? Yes, and, we do uh, have some uh, new news uh, coming out about Elizabeth that. Elizabeth mentioned it from ANCA. We've been mentioning it. Um, there are currently minimum, let's call it that way, a minimum of yeah. two hundred POWs. And there's an article, which I believe it's yes, it's the very first. It's a Vice article of all things. Um, uh, talking about how a POW describes his treatment there in uh, uh, Azerbaijan, and just and just the uh, the first statement and the graphic uh, nature of it. Yeah, the graphic nature. They chained me to a radiator yep. and beat me. Yep, and this is a soldier. Yeah, yeah, this is um, a young soldier, twenty year old or soldier, yeah, Armin. Want to want to actually? Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, want to tie something in back to our honorable ambassador Lynn Tracy? David, remind me. Wasn't she also the one that? did not describe our uh, uh, POWs as POWs, exactly. more like Detain captives. Detainees, captives. Detainees. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. sure, sure, those words are are a way to describe it, but how, you know, wh why- They fall in the Geneva Convention. That's what well, it's- right, that's what Why this incessant need to be beyond neutral? That's all it is. She, yeah, this so incessant have, uh, need to be beyond neutral. So Bro brothers, I'm telling you and sisters that are listening. It's called enabling behavior. It's enabling behavior, number one. Number two, there's definitely some, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, behind the scenes networking that uh, Ambassador Tracy is doing, knowing that probably her time's about to be up. 
blah 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 blah. Yeah, Correct she wants to advance in the Caucasus, perhaps, she or somewhere else. In the Caucasus right? because that's where she is. That's where she resides. It's probably going to be a hot place to be around the Iran issue, and the Caucasus is hovering around Iran. Yeah. So her career behind wants to stick around. So and that's yeah. Okay. So. Real quick to touch on this, just if, if it's okay, guys, I'll give the quote from Armin, 20-year-old soldier in the Vice article. This is really important. I would call on everyone to share this article. And when you share it, tag human rights organizations, tag uh, things like Amnesty International, uh, UN Human Rights, tag them uh, because we need to continue to try to increase awareness of this with everyone else. Uh, because this is such a human, it should be an international humanitarian emergency. And we learned tonight that it's, like you said, Greg, at least 200, maybe much more, Elizabeth was telling us, it's, it could be much, much more, which is even more disturbing. But Armin said, when they were captured, the military police did not interrogate us, they only beat us. On the first day, they chained my hands to the heating system, and I remained in that position, seated on the floor, throughout the whole night. I, I was not able to sleep because of the pain. My face, my eye, and my knee ached. They had hit my knee a lot and it was swollen. This is just some of his, well, I mean, his, let's, his uh, let's, testimony. Let's yeah. be honest. What, what did they really have to ask him? What did they really have to interrogate him for? They, they, they already have good intel and they're already getting better intel than we are apparently. So really their, their, their method was just to beat the snot out of him. Exactly. I mean, right? This is and, like, and, and hold these prisoners of war as as pawns, right? For as they try right. to take Spunik and other things. So anyway, so back to your comment about 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 the reporting on that really we're really quick. I don't see any uh, you know, I, I don't see any difference in the in the in the way that our uh the, that our ambassador is behaving. Uh that it, it's no different than the reasons that let's say, you know, we're having uh having issues with the BBC not reporting correctly. I think it's because of who they report to and the money factors behind behind the scenes. I think there's a lot more going on than we're being made aware of. And I think we Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Moving Absolutely. forward, obviously, there's uh, the members of French Parliament, uh, and Rich, you showed that briefly, uh, that are asking for sanctions yes, against Azerbaijan. And we need uh, more of that. Yeah. Um, you know, and I hope France can enact them outside of the European Union, because within European Union, we again have acting allies of the, the Turco world, as we call them. My last name is Hungarian. Everybody knows that. Unfortunately, President Orban of Hungary is uh, kind of uh, very close to uh, 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 Turkish interests. Uh, Bulgaria, Bulgaria it seems to be always uh, kind of vetoing any anti-Turkish stuff, and so is Poland sometimes. So I hope that that is sanctions directly from France, because that way it can happen. If it's one of those European Union sanctions, um, you know, not as long as you know one of those little Eastern Bloc newcomers to the democracy world of the European Union has a say of a veto. Unfortunately, that just will not fly. So I hope that is directly from France. Um, yeah. I hope that sanctions come in. Elizabeth talked about it. Uh, we're pushing on that here. Uh, Greg, we can mention the link on our feed. There's also, Ospreys has an exclusive right. interview with the daughter of another prisoner of war who has been in touch with them, with his family, saying he is fine. But obviously, he's, we can only imagine how he's been treated. He's a civilian that was arrested um, as, um, as someone that was a threat to the state there because they found uh photos on his facebook of him in military fatigues but he was a civilian uh, and he's still in a baku prison yeah um, so i would just like to say that you know just just to level set for a second uh this is what we're talking about when we say that this is not over that there's a lot more work to be all. done the advocacy work to get us to genocide recognition is one step in a very long march that we are all on and it may seem like you know God, why do you guys got to be such a downer? I just want to celebrate. Yeah, I want to celebrate too. And I'm really happy. And, you know, when I light candles and I think about my family, I think about what we've done, what we've achieved, and what I wish they could be alive to have witnessed. But I don't know about you guys, but I feel in a weird way privileged to have been born here in America. You know, my grandmother and grandfather escaped horrific events. Uh, my, my, my father got got the ball here 
And now I'm here and I got to do some, something with it. And it's not going to be spike in the football because we got one thing. We got one president to say something nice about us or something true about us. We have a lot of work to do as mm-hmm. evidenced by all that we're trying to bring to you today. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so uh, um, speaking of, we've got Sunik under threat. Yeah, that's probably a good segue for that. Uh, Greg, well, we, there's a couple items, right? What can we share with people? Uh, Man, I mean, civilians there are being beaten, are being threatened. What can we share? There was two reports that came out recently. I'm only going to juxtaposition this to, 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 the, to the election, guys. And actually, a, a friend of the show, Ara, a former guest, has mentioned that, you know, as a matter of fact, David, uh, Pashinyan is supposed to resign and stay resigned, but he's the obvious right. man who doesn't follow any rules of any law um, uh, uh, and uh, kind of essentially continues on. Um, but the reason why I'm going to juxtaposition everything that's happening in Sunik is because you are in charge, my friend. You are currently the prime minister. Currently in Sunik, there's a lot of weird stuff happening. Not weird, but actually as expected from our enemy. Uh, there's a, a, a shepherd that was, uh, that was beaten by, uh, by Azeri border patrol um, where is our border patrol in that uh, in that conversation? Yeah. Um, there it, it is, comes back uh, to the whole security zone needed, right? Uh, where where is the security zone? What are we waiting for? Go ahead. Well, Sorry. where is our where is our prime minister talking about that day and night? No, there is right. not none of that. Yet somehow, when I push back on Pashinyan's on and on and on and on like levels of failure, I get pushback from some of the people privileged in the diaspora saying. You know, uh, perhaps you're not being fair to the guy. I'm being as fair. I'm being very, very, very fair to the guy. There is, an uh, you know, uh, there's this notion as if like that's it. We're we're a nothing nation, and if America or Russia can come help us, uh, well then things are okay. But we Armenians cannot do anything. Hey, diaspora, hey. get your get your head out of your sand. Or it's not that we're not doing it. Is that that their Yerevan's not enabling anything to do? We still have an army. We can't. We have boys that are very, 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 very patriotic, and we'll stand for everything. It's just that you don't have a command that says go do that. Okay. No, well, you know, I mean, Greg, look at it like this: If you're getting ready to sell your house, are you really that concerned about the shape of the backyard? Uh, I hate that analogy, but you're right. And so, and I'm not. I'm saying that to to outline the point that. Pashinian it, it does not seem to be projecting an air of concern about every one of his citizens in every one of the areas, or right. else he would be right. acting differently. I'm not, I, you know, I can't, I don't know the man's heart, but I do know what I'm seeing or what we're exactly. seeing. Exactly. So yeah. anyways, uh, David, not... that, that's to explain what's going on in Sunik. Um, again, also not to mention the, the, this weird crypto meeting between uh, President Sarkisian, uh, Pashinyan, and uh, Ambassador Tracy, who we've already outlined, has all the best intentions for Armenia, not. Um, what that uh, meeting in uh, Mehri was, uh, I have yet to understand. Um, so I'm nervous about Sunik. A lot of my friends are nervous about Sunik. Uh, somebody that we follow a lot uh, recently did one of those Q&As on Facebook. What are you concerned about? And she most likely said, I'm, I'm concerned about what's going on in Sunik. Which so really, my wish would be for Sunik not to be handed to our enemy. For Armenians to have that in our head. Right. And Either you know I mean? handed or uh, another war, right? A threat of another so just, war. Right? Just to be clear, we're talking about the Sunni province. This whole, this is an Armenia property. This is Artsakh over here. But we're talking about the Sunni province in order to get to Naichivan. Yeah, yeah. Correct, correct. So for those of you who just haven't seen it or don't understand or don't, or haven't, you know, really seen it on a map, um, this is the area that we're talking about, the Sunni Yeah, and look, I mean, you brought this up. You know, Greg, I know it's your favorite map. You know, I say that very sarcastically, but I'm not trying to make light of anything. Uh, You know, look, we're seeing activity uh, on the eastern border there, uh, and then on the uh, very, very south, there's activity. So, uh, you know, we can share this link too, most likely. And actually, I should probably put it on our link tree uh, at some point. But um, it's extremely concerning that ninth, one of the one of the nine agreement points in the agreement was that railway or, or roadway across Unique, where we're still seeing the threats of force being enacted to make sure that Armenia does that. Um, and 
And so, for those of you who are concerned that, well, well, wait a minute, why, why won't, why wouldn't Iran get involved? Well, Iran is having a COVID spike that is out of control right now, and, and so they have their they've own elections. They have their own elections June 18th, yeah. but they have said to that point, Rich, and we, maybe we can get more into this. Hopefully, we won't, we won't have to get into this. But they have said, apparently, I've seen this from Telegram channels. That was their line in the sand. Sunik, that southern border, was their line in the sand for them to get involved. If, if that's going to start to go, but what do they mean by for them to get involved? Are they actually going to fight? Uh, what, what does that mean? Hopefully it doesn't come to that. I really hope it doesn't come to that. That's going to be absolutely awful. Yo, I'll uh, be honest with you. <laughs> guys, always, 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 I'm the one to say it on this show. We can't enjoy the Biden administration statement. We can't enjoy anything until this dude goes away, man. And by him, I mean the current, the man that lost the war. I don't care if Ser Sarkisian and Kocharan and Levon Terpetrosan, which is never mentioned, by the way. Why is everybody hating on Sarkisian and Kocharan, but never mentioning Levon Terpetrosan, who literally started the corruption in Armenia? He paved the way. We can do an entire episode on that. But as if those three handed a bad army to him, I don't care. You were handed a bad army. You de dealt poorly. You lost. Go away. End of story. Yeah, well, it's like he lost, and he, you could argue, was a large part or driving force in the, the situation we're in to begin with. Absolutely. You know, going, Absolutely. you know, anyway, we've talked about that, uh, his rhetoric, his uh, moving away from, from Russia, pissing off Putin, all has arguably contributed to the situation and, we're in. So, anyway. I am, I, am, I am tired, and this is, this is me being a little pointed. I am tired of Armenians in the diaspora that don't know enough right. having an opinion on this right substantiate with some opinion and you know what i mean like it's it's if you're gonna say kocharan and sarkisian start with levon terpetrosan then i'll have some respect for what you're saying right. okay right you know what so, i mean like like uh, unbelievable yeah Please. yeah so you know i mean part of the reason for those of you who are paying atten attention part of the reason that we're going through all this and part of the reason that we may sound like alarmists but in fact uh, are just outlining what's going on is because it's not just about you know the the people it's not just about the land it's about uh these incredible heritage sites so the last thing that we should touch on uh before we get into the pow's is is what's happening in the occupied lands like uh you know david do you want to touch on this yeah you know like uh preserving Artsakh is just as important as all these other items right thousands of armenian cultural heritage and faith sites are at risk we're, we've already seen um that the two angels you see on those pillars they are now gone um so and there's the video proving it uh, and they're you know, and they are about ready to uh you know level that right it's kind of amazing they haven't leveled that is that what you're going to say rich sorry well i, I was going to say that they're 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 it, it's like some uh not not re, they're remodeling it is what they're going to do and they're going to make it they're going to call it an albanian church like yeah. the, the, the 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 somehow albanians had been all the way over here where uh, it's anyway it's just yeah it's, look so it's something so to many be, we have to be very focused on it and like like our episode a few weeks back about ways to take action online digital activism, things that we can be doing is sharing articles about this, tagging the heritage protection sites and organizations, tagging organizations like UNESCO, even though they are so in bed, excuse my language, with Azerbaijan, we have to still keep doing it. So there are ways for us to, we have to keep the, the awareness, keep spreading awareness about it. Um, it's, it's so important. Um, right, well, yeah. okay, so we have, a, we have a lot of links up. We have a, uh, more links on our link tree. Uh, there's a lot, obviously, that we that we cover in each one of these episodes. Again, we don't ask for for any uh, any money. We do, we are very grateful uh, to one recent benefactor who uh, thankfully helped us level up and get us some microphones. Uh, yeah. Which you'll be you're going to start to see some more mechanical changes coming up in the next few weeks. Um, you know, we yeah. have been working really diligently to make a lot of things happen here, and so we're grateful to everybody who's wa watching or who has in any way pledged some support for us. Um, so uh, we are, we're, David, Greg, we haven't formalized what our new schedule is going to be, but I think it, um, yeah. we're going to make some changes coming up soon. 
right? Yeah, maybe maybe we should we announce it now. Or we could just yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've, we've, yeah. we've made the decision. We shouldn't kind of so from now and on to infinity. Uh, we will be yeah. yeah. We will be uh, 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 on Thursdays at nine o'clock. Okay, uh, that back is to a time Thursday night. That really worked for us. Um, for those of you that listen to us afterwards, anyways, there's really no change. Uh, we'll continue uploading everything to YouTube. For those of you that are you watching us mm -hmm. there, uh, we want to continue making sure that everybody's informed and you know, pardon our rants if we ever are a little bit, you know, uh, you know, we're not super objective. You know, there's passion in what we do because we've been at this for a while, not just on its media, but you know, activism for Armenian. Uh, uh, you know, uh, advocacy in terms of in terms of what we think should be. Um, and as far as Richard, uh, all everything that we say about the uh, um, the monuments in in Artsakh, anything that a, a Turk is touching in that area is going to be whitewashed. Just look at Nakhicheva. Okay, there's no trace of Armenian anything in Nakhicheva. Twenty eight thousand Armenian. Sites gone, gone in Nahi Chaban alone. Twenty-eight thousand. Okay, and now every time, uh, uh, you know, uh, a dumb dumb talk, it's already happening. Nahi Chaban yeah. from Asia or Africa or Europe or Latin America, they go, oh, this is such a, you know, no trace of Armenians whatsoever here. Okay, so that's what I assume is going to happen to Hazard Chetzot if we don't, if we don't rescue it from them. And by rescue it, I mean get rid of Pashinyan first that's it yeah yeah well we'll see we'll see you know uh if my step wins june 20 this may not it's probably not likely um but uh you know look we, were, we had a wonderful guest uh, who's working tirelessly on on uh, our behalf on all these items as well uh so i think it's probably important for us to share uh the uh, rich thank you for sharing the link tree it's got all the, the items there you can go and take action uh, plus, you know, the, the main focus now is POWs and aid for Armenian Artsakh uh, in the short term, right? So the links are all on our link tree. Yeah. For sure. And uh, I want to thank Elizabeth for joining us tonight. I want to thank, thank her for her, her decades of work. I want to thank every advocate uh, from the ANCA and from every other uh, advocacy group or grassroots yeah. organization who's yeah. working on behalf of the nation. We are uh, all in a similar fight. Uh, for the same reasons and we need to treat each other accordingly and i think that you know we we still have a lot of work to do so if there was anything i could say about tonight's episode besides elizabeth did a fantastic job and was very uh, engaging and very uh, informative it's that the fight continues and we just have to transform the way we do it some of the things are gonna some of the bullet points are gonna change some of our strategies are gonna have to move a little bit uh, our focus is going to shift just a little bit in terms of, you know, we've gone through genocide recognition, but we have to hold, keep holding them accountable and not backslide. We have to keep going for policy changes, uh, and we have to keep doing what we can to support the homeland, whether that's financial uh, or or ethical uh, means. We whatever it is, we have to keep doing what we can to support the homeland. Yeah, well All said. Right. Well uh, said. We're at a we're at an hour and a half mark. I think that's a good time. Perfect. Up. yeah thank you everyone for sticking with us and, and watching tonight thank you guys all right thanks a lot everyone all right have a good